call option video you've ever watched. And I think by the end of it, you'll be better at trading options than 95% of the people that are out there. Because not only will you know what you're doing, you'll know what not to do. And I think that's one of the most important things that a person can learn. So without further ado, I'm not going to go over everything we're going through. It's good stuff. Let's jump into what a call option is. And then I'll spell that out in layman's terms. Um, it, an option is a financial derivative, think contract, that gives its owner the right to buy a specified security at a set price, that's the strike, within a certain time period, that's the expiration. All right, layman's terms. Each contract gives you the right to be able to buy 100 shares of a stock. If we're just talking about stocks, we're keeping it simple. The only thing that we'll talk about in here are long calls, going long. I'm going to do a hedging video later. This is just about going long. So that's the focus of this, to keep it simple. But each contract entitles you to buy 100 shares. You do not have to. You are not obligated to. So the only thing you can lose in the end is whatever you put into these contracts. Now, that could be 100% loss if you do not get to the strike and above it by the expiration date. And you'll get a better visual view here soon. Then you could lose all of that. So it's important to understand that this is a this is a contract that gives you the right, not an obligation, and that it's 400 shares for each contract. That's the gist of understanding what a call option is. And then we'll go into a little more detail here in a second. That'll help provide a lot of color. All right. If you want to be able to get into options and start trading, and again, do it small. Let me just do my disclaimer real quick. I am not a financial advisor. I do not know your situation. I do recommend that people start small when they're learning with money. Options can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. I, again, am not a financial advisor. I'm a retired multimillionaire who dropped out of high school. I'm good at this in my mind, and I believe with the 700% returns I had in my portfolio last year and other people's too. But... You have to figure this stuff out. You have to own it and you have to be smart with your money. Don't lose a bunch of money. So back into it here. Options level trading two. This entitles you, look up your broker, um, see how they see how you enable this. A lot of the times it's just clicking on a couple of things and then hitting a button saying you agree to it and you understand how it works and then they'll give you access to it. Maybe that takes a day or two sometimes. But you'll need this before you can even start. So get started on it if you're interested. Now, options level two sounds like it's a higher level. It's really not. It's the starter pack. It allows you to long calls, which means you, you're betting the stock is going up, and allows you to long puts, which means you're betting that the stock is going down. So this is the most basic version you can get. Um, make sure you set that up. Next, what not to do with options. Maybe one of the most important slides in this entire thing. Don't buy short-term options. Definitely don't do zero-day. Don't do weekly. I would argue don't even do monthly unless you're hedging as a strategy for some reason or have insider information, which you should not have, or you're an idiot. Just don't do it. And the, the reason why is visible right here. This is a near the money option. This is worse with out of the money. Now, I do a decent amount of out of the money, but I've got a I've got a methodology behind it that I'll go into in a little bit. But you can see theta decay kicks in. That's time decay. That means as time goes on, you, it loses value. Now, let me explain this real quick. Options, you make money in two different ways. One is the intrinsic value. The intrinsic value, I'll use this example of PayPal that we'll be talking about in a little bit here. The intrinsic value is... I bought a January 2025 PayPal contract with a strike of $140. If let's say it's January 2025 and that stock is at 200, I make $60 per share. You get 100 shares in a contract. So 60 times 100 times however many contracts I own. That is the intrinsic value. That's actually what it's worth in the end. Now there's something called extrinsic value and that essentially is the premium that is being paid along the way and that can ramp up and then go back down it goes back down near the end this is why i only buy leaps i only buy contracts that are one to two years out because i don't want that massive time decay 
pressing me every day and eroding my options in a massive way. Now, when you pick ones that are way far out, you get that benefit. You get that benefit of having plenty of time for things to play out. Now, this might mean that the curve up when when a stock makes gains doesn't hit like immediately. Maybe it takes a little bit more movement, but trust me, it's very worth it in the end. I'll show that with some of the curve of how you lose money and make money on the options calculator here in a bit. But that's the big one. Don't do short-term stuff. People that do zero zero day calls, 90% of them get wrecked. Okay? Like 10% of them make money. Maybe 15. But the vast majority lose and they lose the same day. So if you want to just wipe out everything you have, go short-term. If you like the concept of video lottery, but don't want to see things moving around in your screen and you'd rather just lose the money, go zero day. You'll be very effective at it. I hope you get the sarcasm. Earnings day. Don't, don't, don't buy into earnings. Days or the day, especially, of earnings. There's something called implied volatility. If there's implied volatility at 10%, that means that there's going to be high, high amounts of people that have funneled into options, make, placing bets on where things are going. That sucks. Why? Because it's just, it's an, it's an amplifi amplification of theta decay. Because you have even more interest in it, which means when that thing decays down, even if it goes in the direction you bet, maybe you got, like, maybe it went in the direction you bet, you don't make anything. Maybe you just end up zero at the end of the day. And everybody that's wrong just loses. So again, don't bet on earnings day. The only bets I do on earnings day are after earnings. If something gets crushed, like let's say my favorite thing that I believe is going to do really well in 2026 or beginning of 2025, and I've got that leap in front of me and I've been watching it. I bought a contract so I could look ahead and see the price movement on it. Smart thing to do if you're interested in something. Buy one. And that way you could see that, oh, it got crushed 30% today. Dude, I'm going to step into that. I'm going to buy a little bit of that. That's when you buy on earnings day. You certainly don't do it before because implied volatility will crush you and the interest will crush you. Don't do it. All right, next one. Too far out of the money. I actually kind of specialize in this, so I go against this rule a decent amount. But I do that based upon a thesis. And this is how it works. And I talk about this in some other videos. But my foundation, my mountain, is the macro. I focus on the macro and understanding where I think things are going. Right now, in the current macro environment, I believe it's very positive. I'll cover a little bit of that later. I cover then the next layer on that mountain. The mountain has to start. You got to have it with the macro first. That's the biggest driver of what's going to happen with your investment. Next is the fundamentals. You got to have fundamentals too. Otherwise, it could still cave. So you want to understand how's the company doing? How's the investment doing? What's coming up? Think about the future. Markets look at the future. They don't care about now. Ignore narratives today telling you, oh, this isn't a good stock because it's been going down for two or three years. Why would anybody invest in this? So dumb. Do you even know what's coming up for this stock? Do you know anything about the company? Do you know what's making it better? Do you know what it's going to look like six months from now? These are the things that matter. Carry about, care about the weighing machine. Care about the thing that's going to ultimately matter six months or a year from now, depending upon your time frame. Don't care about the noise. Find the signal, okay? Make sure that you're doing that. That's how I do out of the money right. And I'll go into those examples here in a little bit and cover that in more detail. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about, um, the picking the date in the strike price. Now, to be clear here, um, I'm not going into all that in this video. I've got a PayPal video, like I said. I'm going to reference a little bit of that, but go to the PayPal video. It does a great job of showing why for that specific stock I picked my date and my strike price. I'm not going to go into that now. What I will cover right now, though, that is important, and let me just pull it up here, is the options chain. So next step, after you figured out your strike price and all the technical stuff, and I go into that in the videos, you can watch the other one for that, I know roughly in my head that I like the PayPal January 2025 140 call for its potential returns because that's where my strike is. That's where, I shouldn't say that, that's where my target is from a TA standpoint. I think that that's the 200 weekly moving average. It's a really good range for me for where, where we're going to hit strong resistance, but I think there's a really good chance that we go to it. 
at the very least 100 and I make money either way. I'll show you how. But in here, we use this options chain. You might have one in your broker. If you don't, go to NASDAQ.com, click on market activity, go to options, put in the ticker symbol that we're talking about. We're going to PayPal. In here, go to January 2025 because that's the one we want, right? I'm going to calls. I'm going to out of the money because that's what I'm looking for on this one. That's where the big money is. Now, how do we know which one to pick? Here's how. It doesn't show volume right now because of the time of day that we're at, but you'll see that in a little bit. But here's how. It's the open, open interest. You look for the one with the biggest open interest. That's the key primary driver. You also look towards volumes too, but that's secondary. Open interest will let you know what the volumes will be in the future. So... Again, I was saying I wanted to be in the 140. It's actually probably 145 is what my target, I think, will reach. But but the 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 double that open interest almost is on the 140. That would be the one I pick. And that is the fourth reason for not getting wrecked in options. You want the highest amount of interest and, and, and volume so that you have liquidity when you go to exit. If you don't, you'll have an issue where you go to sell. Nobody's there. It's crickets. You go to sell, nobody's there. It's crickets. You keep going down, nobody's there. And if you don't have the money at expiration to actually buy the 100 you know, shares for each contract, and I've got 3,700 contracts for PayPal. Needless to say, 3,700 times 100 is a pretty big number. So if I don't want to buy you know, 370,000 shares, whatever, then then I need to make sure there's liquidity to be able to sell these out to the people that do want to buy them. So again, look at open interest. That's hugely beneficial and required. Now, real quickly, I'm going to touch on this. How did I decide? How did I decide this range here? This 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 target of the 145. Um, and I've got view only mode, so I can't show you the, the moving average, but right up here near this daily gap in PayPal, you'll see that it's right around the 150 range. There's also a 200 moving average when it's on the weekly time frame that is right around here in the 145 range. So that's how I chose my target because that the 200 moving average is when you switch to like a bullish market versus a bearish one. So we could just revert to the mean on this 200 moving average and then fail for another year or something. But the chance of at least getting to that is pretty high. I think about 60%, maybe higher. The chance of getting to just mean reverting back just to the FIB level. We've been trading sideways to down for two years. And just to mean revert, go up 60%, I would say that's 75% probability, right? It's really high. Now, why does that matter? Let's go back over here. So I'm going to pull up on, on options, uh, profitcalculator.com. This is one I like to use. There's a few different versions of this. Use whichever one works for you. I like this one. I've been using it for about five years, and I think it's great. I'm going to put in the symbol. It, it puts the price. I do select option. Again, we talked about doing January 2025, so that's what I'm going to do. We know we're doing the 140. Why? Because the open interest is huge, and I know that I'll have liquidity at the end. 88 cents happens to be what I paid for mine. I'm going to put in my 3,700 contracts so we can get an idea of what I'd make. I'm actually going to expand out these ranges. I like to do that so I get a better picture of how much I can lose and how much I can make. Let's go to 155 because, again, that's that's kind of getting us closer to where that 200 moving average is. Now, the mean reversion, just going up 60%. If we did that and got to that 104, 100 range by April, I would make... 2.35, 2.2 million dollars, right around there, anywhere from 2.35 to 180,000 or 1.8 million dollars. That's off of 325,000. So we're talking about moves that are 877 percent to 680, or I'm sorry, 723 percent to 545 percent off of 65 to 58 percent moves. So we're looking at nine, 10 Xers here in a very short period of time. This gives this earnings report for PayPal to do okay. They just laid off a bunch of people. They're making a bunch of changes to improve transaction, to improve um, to improve the volume of transactions that go through by helping the merchants, helping the customers, and, and just streamlining a lot of processes. Plus, they laid off 9% of their workforce. 
in order to become more efficient. And this company's doing great. I won't go into all the fundamentals. So that's in the other video. But there's a lot of stuff to look forward to with this company. A lot of baggage that's left behind and a lot of good stuff coming in with the new new uh, CEO, Alex Chris. So macro, I think, is good. Won't go into that right now. Fundamentals, good. TA, we just saw. Good chance of mean reverting. Could make a couple million dollars. Worst case, I lose it all if this stock goes nowhere for a year. I don't think that's going to happen, though. But I'm okay with that. This is about 13% of my portfolio. I can be wrong and still end up doing really well. But if I'm right just on this one piece, just on this one piece, then I've got, across my entire portfolio, well over a double for the year. Again, if let's get this point across. If 87% of my other portfolio is flat, I've more than doubled my money across my entire portfolio with 13% of it. Something to think about. So I like asymmetric bets and I like diversification amongst great companies and I like to follow like maybe 10 or less. And then I look for those opportunities in incredibly over oversold conditions. We're lucky right now. If you think about the macro, and I'll touch on that real quick. We're lucky right now because in this macro world, there's a number of things that can go right. I'm just going to highlight them. Global liquidity, we're at the beginning of a cycle, multi-year cycle. So this could go into 2026. If we don't have war, crazy things don't happen. And even if we have a war, money printers probably go in burr. We just had a recession in 2022. If you don't believe that, look at how Meta was down 75%, Tesla was down 75%, meme stocks, gone, SPACs, gone, meme coins, gone. Um, it's Everything just got wiped out. These things got crushed, utterly crushed, right? 2023, things started to recover, but there's still a bunch of the market that hasn't. Real estate looks like it's going to get go ahead and turn around because as rates go down, which are going to start in March or May, as rates start to go down, people will search for yield and people that have that are up 30 to 5 to 40% on their equity since the pandemic will now be able to start to tap that in an environment where if they get a home equity line of credit, the amount they have to pay each month will go down each time those rates start to drop. So they'll actually see lower payments in the future. So they know their max pain in the beginning and then things are going to get better. So they can start to tap that equity and spend. That's that's important because two-thirds of the country owns re residential real estate. So two-thirds of the country is going to be able to benefit from this, roughly, and have more wealth than they had before. So remember that. So liquidity is high, and we're in a, an election year in the United States. Markets going back to the 50s, if the incumbent is running, have went up every single time they've closed higher. That's a little food for thought. Also, it's not just us having elections. It's everyone Every country, pretty much, every democracy around the world, a record number are having elections. So they all want liquidity to go up. They want to get reelected, right? They're going to try and keep their economies afloat. Then you have China falling apart. Don't touch China. But they're pumping up their markets. They're eliminating short selling. They're in an irrational exuberance phase, similar to the dot-com bubble for us right now, except it's worse. They're going through the dot-com bubble and the 2008 great financial crisis all at the same time. But as they're doing that, they're at the heading into that phase. It could take a year or two before they really implode. And as they do that, they're going to just be pumping liquidity. And they already have record outflows. You're going to continue to see more of that. So again, we've got a, an awesome macro setup right now, I think, for the ability to be able to do long calls and have a diversified portfolio. And then if you hedge five, in, if you want to get insane, 10% of your portfolio with asymmetric bets, like what I'm doing with Best Buy and what I'm probably going to add to uh, with Starbucks, I'm probably going to push these to 2026. You're going to be really well covered. Again, not financial advice, but I'm just saying, do the math. Look at this. Learn. Think about it. Judge for yourself how this how this can play out. And um, anyway, let's move on. I do want to show you Real quickly, and I'm just going to gloss over this fast. I'm not going to go and do all the other stuff. I want to show you Bitcoin miners. I get a bunch of people asking about Bitcoin miners and whether or not they should buy them and get options instead. I don't like them. The reason I don't like them is you could get maybe a 2x or a little bit over the underlying asset. But the problem is your risk is going up a lot in doing that. And um, let me see here. Is this January? Uh, I got a weird issue in my browser here. Let me just reload this. Let me reload this. Hut. Selecting the option. There we go. That's better. January 2025. 
I'm going to pick 25 in this one because I already know that's where all the open interest is. That's a like a 200 plus percent move or a 3xer to get this one. Let's do like uh, let's do 10 contracts, keep it small. Um, let's say it could go to 30. Let's say it could stay in five. This company's getting a class action lawsuit right now, so it's got risk. Um, I'm not even in this one. But here's what I don't like about miners, and a lot of them look like this. Let's say this thing goes up 233%. You've lost 60% of your money if this happens by January 2025. You can't do January 2026 because that would be assuming that the Bitcoin cycle will be longer than it's ever been before. And it's, if anything, it's probably going to be shorter because we have more multipliers to the upside, which means we're more likely to see a blow off higher, more insane but also have it in quicker because of that. And again, macro could cause that problems heading into, you know, late 2025, we could be seeing some weirdness around the world. So keep that in mind. Um, but this thing, look at that, the curve is so steep in this thing and you can lose so much money so, so quickly. If we just stay sideways, let's say we just, you're invested in this thing and we just stay sideways till June. June's not even that far out. You've lost almost 60% of your money. By August, it's basically, I mean, three-fourths is gone. And again, to get the multiplier here, if we went up 200% by, let's say, August, 200% higher than it is right now, setting basically well into the new cycle highs, right? It was at 19 recently, but that was off a of blow-off. But let's say we get to 25. You got 541% off of 233, so you got a little over 2x in your returns, right? That's not worth it to me. I want at least 3x, I 4x ideally. Ideally 6 to 10x because then I know that my upside returns if I place a few bets like this in different directions with different companies, one if one of them works it's it's good and I'm up. And I've covered the rest. And then if another one works, I'm just it's all gravy after that. So make sure the odds are on your side. Um again, don't do short-term things because there's a not, like a 10 to 1 I'm sorry, nine to one odds that you're going to lose for short term calls. Like you could, there's a really strong chance that you lose more than you win. And then again, with this, the odds for winning aren't that great versus losing. So I just stay away from it. Now, let me hop out of this real quick here. Uh, we're going to jump back over. We've done the calculator. Now we're going to talk about buying. We're going to talk about the actual buying process. Um, I was going to show you this in my account, but there's just so much information and it's really hard to get, get it out of there. So we're gonna do it here. The thing to pay attention to, buy to open. Since we're doing long calls and long puts, again, betting on it going up, betting on it going down, the simple stuff, you're gonna buy to open and sell to close, no matter what direction you're going in. So always buy to open. We're picking a share or a contract, which has the, the right to buy 100 shares, not the obligation. We've got an expiration of January 17th, 2025. We picked our strike. We did that again with the options chain and 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 the video on that I'm doing where we're figuring out the technicals for it, figuring out the fundamentals, macro, all that stuff. Leave it on call. That's all we're doing in this video. Here's the important thing to pay attention to. One, you're setting the limit price yourself. It's not like a more market order where you just say do it. You're having to set how much you're willing to pay for it. But even before that, how do you do that? The bid. The bid is the buyer. The ask is the seller. Think of it that way. If you're buying, you're the bid. You want to get as close to the low end of this as possible because you don't want to overpay. Now, some of these have really wide ranges. This example is literally a penny. So if you go and say, I'll do 88 cents, it's basically game over. There's going to be somebody there to buy it. Now, there might, if you're buying a bunch of contracts, there might not be as they might not be willing to buy all of them. So maybe you have to go a little bit higher to get to the to where there's more people that are ready to buy. Now, this could be a dollar. Let's say it's a dollar. If it's 87 cents, it doesn't close. You can go in and edit this thing after it's in your order status screen, wherever that is on your broker. If you don't see it executed, you can go in there and edit, and you can change it to 88, change it to 89, change it to 90, whatever whatever it, it, it does. In some cases, they only do allotments of like 0 0.05 cents in the contract. So you'll have to you know, do like 80, 85, 90, 95. But they'll give you a message if that's the case. Either way, though, you want to get it to where you're executed. You want to try not to pay too much. Duration, I stick with a day. I don't leave these overnight. That's just a personal preference. I recommend the same for people that are starting. And again, do one contract. Make it easy. Make it simple. 
When this thing closes, you own it. Follow it. Pull up the options calculator again. Along the way, watch how you're doing. If you if you got way up here on something, look to see, like, do I want to hold it and potentially go down over the next three months? Or is now the time to get rid of most of this or all of it? Use that options calculator. Figure that stuff out. Otherwise, now we're fast forwarding to it's time to sell. Now we bought to buy, we did buy to open. We do sell to close on options. Again, whether we're going long with calls or going or, or going short with puts, it's the same thing. We're buying to open, selling to close. Now it's going to default the rest of this. It'll default to all your contracts. Make sure you put in the right number that you want to sell unless you've Otherwise, you might be like, oh, crap, I wanted to sell a couple of these and I just sold all of them. So just make sure what you, you pay attention to these numbers. It will default the expiration date, the strike. It'll default the type and call here. All that stuff should be default. Just check the quantity. Now, this time we're on the opposite end. We want to look at the ask. We want to sell it as close to the ask as possible. Start high, work your way down. Leave it on limit. Again, that's probably the only way your broker allows you to do it. Make sure you set the right limits, both on the buy and the sell. I don't know if all brokers work this way. Mine's smart enough to where I can't put $88 for something for a contract if it's if it's 88 cents I want to do. It's too far outside of the realm of the of the trading range. And so it'll say warn and say, we can't let you do this. So it it keeps me safe. I don't know if all brokers do that. They should. I can't imagine nobody would, but just to be safe, always double check the quantity, make sure you got the right contract, make sure the limits are set right, and then submit. You'll get confirmation that it's sold, you're out. You didn't even have to buy and exercise these options. You bought, you got that extrinsic value from that premium going up and the intrinsic from it going up, and you were able to absorb both of those instead of waiting to expiration and only getting the intrinsic value. And you made a bunch of money, again, I'm going to go back here and I want to rehash something else real quick. This is the most important part of the slide. Remember, option chains. Make sure you get one that has open interest so you don't get screwed. Don't do short-term options so you don't get screwed. Don't do earnings day options. No matter what, don't buy the long-dated ones or the short-dated ones around earnings because all of them have extra premium because there's more interest. Stay away from them. Too far out of the money. Stay away from it unless you got a methodology like mine where you know what you're doing and you know why you're doing it and you know your chance of success with a high degree of probability. Do these things if you want to be successful. I highly recommend it. Again, not a financial advisor, not financial advice, but be smart with this stuff. Start small. There's always more opportunity in the future. You don't need to catch PayPal. You can catch many more. I'm going to be posting tons of this content. My goal, if I can get enough people to join, like even with a $3 starter pack and help support the channel, my goal is to get it to where I can pay somebody to do all this busy work. I spent six hours trying to get this video to work because the technical stuff wasn't working. And then I got to figure out, oh, what are good thumbnails and what then create all the content and do all this other. There's a lot of busy work that goes into YouTube that I don't think people appreciate. And I don't want to do it. I want to be the macro guy. I want to be the the fundamental guy, or at least connected with the right people that know the fundamentals. I, I want to be the TA guy because I really specialize in that too. Macro and TA is like my sweet spot, man. It's my jam. So that's the stuff I want to do. Um, that's what you're going to see more of as I as I as I'm able to produce more of this and hopefully get some help from some from somebody that can do all the editing because I don't want to do it. I just want to talk. I just want to produce. And um, but anyway, I hope you learned a lot out of this. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Um, I love you. I want you to be successful. Don't be stupid. Um, let's make a bunch of money together. Let's figure out what to invest in. Let's get rich together, get richer together, depending upon who you are. And let's, let's make the world a better place. Let's invest in companies that make the world a better place. Let's invest in the people that we love. Let's invest in our communities. Let's do things that make the world better. I can tell you I've got money. Uh, it's way more rewarding to help. Love you guys and talk to you later.